right, this is SF Barcast. I'm Jeff Cleary. I am Andrew Lauder. And Andrew, where are we today? We are at The Elixir. The Elixir. 16th and Guerrero. 16th and Guerrero, yes. Right on the damn corner. It actually, a long time ago, this bar used to be a Jack's. And I don't know that much about like the Jack's franchise, but it was like a local series of bars in San Francisco. It's like the raised famous pizza of uh, San Francisco. Yeah, but except it was, it was, it was real. <laughs> oh, I see. So they had Jack's. Yeah, it was famous. They had Jack's cable car, and right. that was on California and like Polk. Okay. Which uh, became Soda Popinski's. Ah. And there was a Jack's that on um, Fillmore, and that became the John Lee Hooker's Boom 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 Room. Oh, I remember that. Okay, yeah. And uh, this one used to be that. one as well. This is a Jack's. Right. It was Jack's Elixir. Oh, here's my ride. Ah, always a quality joke. All right. Jesus Christ. It's a, uh, oh, it's an ambulance. Do you get as mad as I do? Like, I mean, like, like it's hard to be a dick about that. Or like, right. But if I'm, like, walking around listening to a podcast, you know, it's like, it's so easy for a siren or even a right. lo loud engine to drown out what you're listening to. <laughs> and I just get really mad. I'm just like, oh, fuck those people. I hope they die. And like, well, they're on their way to dying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'm sure they probably will. Oops. Ah. Oh, Jesus. Well, oh, so this whole thing's falling apart already. Exactly. We haven't done a podcast in a while. Yeah, it's been like a little, a little over a week. I was basking in the glow of all that, uh, that Chucklepedia. <laughs> That's right. Exposure. You, you could you could barely leave the house. Like yeah, you, you, you well, get I, mobbed I, by I, fans. I could leave the house, but I didn't want to get mobbed. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Like, we are. You know what? It's funny that the ambulance just came by and interrupted us. <laughs> that is funny. The <laughs> uh, this is the day after Fourth uh, of July, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd like to announce that I did not get shot in the face with a firework <laughs> like I did last year. Yeah. Well, um, one for two. I mean, I think they did. They tried to shoot me in the face, but I stayed in my house <laughs> because. But everything right outside my window was just exploding, oh, on nice. fire and exploding. That's the neighborhood I live in. Right, right. And actually, when you're walking around today, you see just all this like you know firework debris trash <laughs> in the streets of the mission. Like, would you say that? I mean, you know, you've you've obviously lived on on uh, on in this area for quite some time now. Quite some time, Cap. <laughs> like, would you uh, would you say that fireworks? Uh, overall have decreased like as more no. rich people move in or it's just the same no i wouldn't say I, the thing is like there are more people who moved in who are wouldn't be into fireworks you know the more right. sort of like upper class people who have moved in but i feel like the people who are into fireworks they're they will not be deterred you know and also like what are you gonna do? Someone just like blew something up near you. What are you gonna tell them to stop? They have all the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're, they've already expressed their, their willingness to blow stuff up. I don't, really, I don't really don't like the way you shoot with that gun. Why don't you stop <laughs> it? That's right. Knock it off. Um, uh, but yeah, like I was walking around last night and people were just throwing, I don't know, they're throwing <laughs> it out the windows of their cars or something like that. <laughs> And, and we're talking about not like M80s or anything like that. We're right. talking about like quarter sticks of dynamite. Ah, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, there's a, f a few of those that like went off in the East Bay last night, like where uh, where you're just kind of like, uh, like it just stops you in your tracks, where you're like, fireworks, fireworks, fireworks. Oh, you know. oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. It's like, oh, uh, that was probably big enough to take out a car. On the Onion, they had like a list of like safety rules for uh, fireworks. Right. And they said that like children should always have the supervision of an adult or older cousin. <laughs> and that was like my uh, experience when I was a kid too. We had, like, we had these cousins whose dad, everybody had like a older cousin or a dad, uncle, who like just drove back from like south of the border <laughs> in like a, right. maybe a pickup truck or a pickup truck with like a trailer on the back and it's all like filled a, with fireworks. Like a camper van stuffed with <laughs> Roman candles. <laughs> Like, and then you're just like, that's the coolest <laughs> guy in the world. He's like, gather around me, children, and blow your hands off. <laughs> She's like, yes, sir. <laughs> it's funny when you're a kid, you're like, that's the guy you idolize. Right. Like the, the, <laughs> the adults that are like, hey, I think maybe you should wear some safety goggles. <laughs> like, ha, ha. Not, like, your, like, not your stupid parents that are looking out for your well-being. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, mom, you square. <laughs> you don't know. Um. Just to uh, refresh the, the, my story from last year, though, uh, I got shot in the face with a firework debris and had to go to the emergency room. And 
the emergency room on 4th of July treat, night is just as magical as you might ever imagine. There's some TV series like that that I just saw ads for that's like, it's basically they just like turn on a camera in the emergency room and it's like, well, if I want to see that, like I can go to an emergency room. Nobody wants to see that. Like, like, no, <laughs> like no one's like standing around going, God, I wish I could like hang out in an emergency room. Well, that's what you should do. Like if, you, if you're wondering whether you should make a show or watch a show, just ask if you would do it. Well, yeah, exactly. Like on, on 4th of July <laughs> night, would you walk down to the emergency room at SF right. General? No. But that's the thing. I mean, like, like all of like reality television now or whatever is just some guy's boring job, <laughs> you know, where it's like, like, oh my God, like Bigfoot trackers or like, you know, oh. or, uh, you know, truckers, ice road truckers or like regular road truckers, and, like, uh, mud tr truckers. Truck road ice. <laughs> right. uh, well paved road truckers. <laughs> When I was leaving the uh, last year, when I went to the emergency room, I got there kind of before the rush. Okay. <laughs> uh, but when I was leaving, more people start showing up with missing limbs. <laughs> when I was leaving the uh, the emergency the uh, hospital, like there was like the whole like waiting room for the emergency room was like it was like filled with people with their bloody hands. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. I was like, just like, yep. Yeah, so I, I no, I'm I'm good. I don't have to stay. I can I get to leave. I just took a Firework to the face. You guys are in trouble. <laughs> That's right. I don't, I don't need my face like you need your hands. Uh, so we haven't done a, a show in a while. Yeah, it's been a little What's bit. What's happened in the news since? Uh, you know, just little things here and there, like uh, like gay marriage being declared legal and Obamacare being like completely defended. Yeah, the uh, Supreme like, Court had a pretty good week, or a bit. Well, the president had the best week. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, uh, on. On the heels of, uh, of interviewing uh, with Mark Marin, suddenly everything started coming up well for him. Got the Marin bump. <laughs> exactly. But like, but look at this. Uh, so far, like, this has been six years of uh, meaningless bullshit. We got to get Marin involved to, to <laughs> affect some actual change. Uh, let's sit down with some hack and it'll make you look good. <laughs> we got Gilbert Gottfried or Mark Marin. Um, so, yeah, like, I think the last time we did an episode, uh, it was right before Pride Week. Mm -hmm. And right before Pride Weekend, and right before Pride Weekend, uh, gay marriage became legal in every state. Right. So, as you might imagine, the city was a fucking. <laughs> it was just insane. What was uh, what started out as uh, promising to be an ordinary uh, bunch of gay people <laughs> celebrating turned into uh, everybody celebrating. Do you know, like, uh, although everybody was like very happy about like you know, getting equal rights on yeah, the. Speak for like, yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, there had to be like there are gay couples that are very much like straight couples, where they're just like in this relationship, and you know, one of the per one one person in the relationship really wants to get married, and the other one's right. like, absolutely not. Like <laughs> we all know, like, the well, too bad it's illegal. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Yeah. So like, and I'm sure there was a few gay couples who were like, you know, what, the guys just like, yeah, I'd love to marry you, but uh, it's illegal. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. As soon as the prejudice of others uh, can <laughs> catch up, we can get married. Oh, it just did. Oh, crap. <laughs> crap. Oh, we need to talk. It's like, oh, are, are you sure it's legal? Like, what, what if I do it in a weird way? Like, what if, uh, what if we're naked? Like, <laughs> Is there a state where it's still illegal? <laughs> like, if I go to Arkansas and, like, pull down my pants at the you know, Justice of the Peace, will I, will I deny my marriage license then? Uh, but it was, like, an amazing weekend. And uh, it was, exactly. actually it was kind of a blur, to be honest. <laughs> And then, uh, like, right on the heels of that, uh, you have uh, Donald Trump just being a gigantic idiot the whole time. Oh, yeah. Like, which, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, less we talk about it, the better, probably. Like, yeah, he's, he's uh, definitely in, in that category of uh, things that people need to ignore to make it go away. Well, you know what? Honestly, my take on Dr Donald Trump is, you know, he, it's like a vanity-like campaign. Certainly. Uh, because he's a... Fucking out of life for him, pretty much. Yeah, it's he because he, he's an out of control egotist. Right, right. But you know, like, what evidence know. do you have to support that? Other <laughs> than his name being on every building he's ever made. But like, everybody is saying that. You know, it's because of the Herman Cain effect. Like Herman yeah, Cain yeah. really had no chance to win the presidency. Right, but he but, made a bunch of money. <laughs> but like, he got his name out there. He got name recognition. Right. He can do like speaking circuits now. Yeah. He can. He writes books. He's it gets he gets invited onto like Fox News or whatever. Right. Like. But every, every company that's run by a shitty racist is like, hey, we can bring in Herman Cain, and everybody <laughs> will think that I'm A-OK -okay with the blacks. <laughs> As Jimmy Dore said, like, the more I see, the more I read about how Herman, how successful Herman Cain was, like, running Godfather's Pizza, he makes him think that, like, the pizza business, like, runs itself. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Uh, but like the thing is, like Herman Cain, like nobody really knew who Herman Cain was, so it did behoove him to run for president, spend sure. all that money, and now everybody knows who he is. Donald Trump, like everybody knows who he is already. Right. It's not like he needs to get his name out there to get yeah, a little yeah. bit of exposure. So he must really think, I've got a shot at this. Either that, I mean, like, and if I can put on my uh, conspiracy hat for a second, your yeah, tinfoil hat. Yeah, exactly. Just, uh, uh, get the antenna just right. Um, but uh, you know, part of me thinks that uh, that sort of Donald Trump's existence is like, you know, or, or what he's doing is is sort of masterminded by someone else. You know, where where you know where they're like, okay, like we need like one person to volunteer to be a complete nut job. And like, and then that way, every other candidate will look like pretty reasonable by comparison. Well, like, the, uh, uh, just to play devil's advocate, I don't see where the benefit of that is because that's mm -hmm. what the problem with the last. Uh, yeah, actually, you're right. Like a lot, la of, a, lot of the, a lot of the candidates have, have been like pretty, pretty silent about like, you know, telling Donald Trump to go shove it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, in the last, uh, the last election, the primary for the Republicans, the problem that. Um, What's his name? Mitt Romney had Mitt. was that like all the other candidates in the Republican primary were doing really well at one point or another, right. and Mitt Romney was like really the only serious candidate. And but <laughs> True. so he had to fucking like crazy himself up. Right. You know, it's like if you had like Michelle Bachman, who's like, or Rick Perry or Herman Cain, who are like leading in the polls just because they're saying crazy shit. Right. Mitt Romney's like, well, I guess I gotta say some crazy shit. <laughs> Right. And then he did, and then all that crazy shit that he said, like, came back to bite him in the general. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, so, like, I don't know what the angle is for whoever's, like, trying to get, like, uh, Donald Trump to run. Right. Because he, if he does do well, it's just going to make everybody else have to go crazy in that direction. And that's going to yeah. ultimately end up hurting them in the general. Sure, sure. Which is great. <laughs> see how... <laughs> Which is great. I, I hope they get hurt really badly. Andrew, see how I slip up and I apply logic to uh, the <laughs> Republican right. primary? You are uh, you are fired from Fox Television. Yeah. So, but it is going to be really interesting because, like, I didn't—I honestly didn't think that uh, a primary could be as joyful as the last one was. <laughs> but well, like, yeah, the clown like car <laughs> of candidates that are like already declared themselves is just like they don't know. They, they're trying to figure out how they're going to whittle it down to like get just like 10 12, people 12 for a debate or whatever stage. yeah yeah there's like 22 people right like well who's that, like, that doctor was running uh oh uh yeah like carson? uh yeah ben carson ben or whatever carson. Like, yeah yeah he's he's as nuts as any, as any of them like he's isn't he the guy who gave uh, michael jackson all that those drugs <laughs> i think so no you're thinking of uh <laughs> Con <laughs> conrad something <laughs> yeah conrad bain <laughs> yeah father from uh, different strokes uh, we're breaking news here. Uh, <laughs> Conrad Bain killed Michael Jackson. <laughs> That's right. And he's running for president. And he's running for president. <laughs> uh, no, it's crazy, though. I mean, like, and, and, yeah, I didn't, like you said, like, I didn't think anything could top, like, like the last election just seemed like such a never-ending, like, awesome. fucking horrible shit show that, like, I was like, oh, well, at least we have, like, a few years off to, like, recover. And then it's like a year later, it's like, okay, we got 20, <laughs> you know, 20 candidates, and most of them are nuts. The last election... The Republican primary must have been. It was for me like watching the uh, the Seattle uh, Seahawks beat the <laughs> Denver Broncos for you, right? Because there was no way that Seattle was going to lose that game. Yeah. And it was just like fun to see the other team implode. <laughs> it's like, like the whole Republican primary. There was no point where I was like, oh my god, could this guy could this guy really win? It's right. Like no, right, all these right. people are fucking lunatics. <laughs> That is, I mean, that is kind of crazy, though, that, that uh, do you, in order to, like, cash in, like, you just, all you have to do is be a complete lunatic and, like, declare, like, your candidacy. And, like, yeah, and you get, like, a month of, like, people sending you money. Well, the thing is, it's, it's not cheap to run for president, but yeah. it actually ultimately ends up being a good investment for, right. for some of these candidates. Right. Who do you think? Cheap for the Koch brothers. If, uh, you know, if, if, yeah. if, you, if you can get in good with them, they'll just be like, cut a check for it right away. In the last Republican primary, I was looking at the, again, the clown car of candidates. <laughs> right. And I was like, you know what, it has to be Romney. Romney's the only one who is, r like, even serious, like, remotely right. serious, who's got a chance. So then they and had even to even then, it's kind of close. It's like, well, uh, and at the same time, he's, like, the most, like, plutocratic, like, example of, like, corporate, like, you know. Well, his biggest problem was that he had to run from his record. 
Yeah, like, because okay. he like set up like a really good like insurance program in Massachusetts. Then he basically had to like you know, you know, walk that back and act like, oh yeah, that was right. stupid because like everybody was running against Obamacare, which was yeah, basically yeah, yeah. the same thing. Uh, so looking at this, the like, I know it's like in the infant stages of the election, right. but it's like looking at the field of candidates. Is there are there? I have three candidates that are like a, that are basically Legit. serious. Yeah. Like, like, would, yeah, I can think of. I can probably think of three. Uh, I mean, there's, I guess, uh, Hillary Clinton is somewhat serious. No, no, I mean, or, or you're I mean just on, on the Republican, Republican side. side. Okay, all right. Um, well, obviously Trump. No. Um, <laughs> Trump, Carson. <laughs> Trump, Carson, and uh, Michelle Bachman. <laughs> I actually got suckered in by a, a fake internet news story on Facebook recently. Um, somebody posted like a, uh, what looked like an article from the New York Times saying that uh, Michelle ba Bachman's husband uh, like broke off the marriage, like yeah, the day yeah. of day of like the uh, um, uh, marriage equality thing, but like that turned out to be a phony baloney story. But was it I bullshit? Can, yeah, I can. I mean, but it's one of those things where like, at first I was like, well, that's that's hilarious, and then I was like, well, wait a minute, can that be true? And like, yeah, because it's yeah, it, it wasn't one of those things that was so outlandish that it was just immediately like, ha, that's funny. Yeah. But like, yeah, it seemed uh, almost reasonable. Anyway, here are my three um, oh, Republican, yeah, yeah, yeah. Republican candidates that I think have a shot. Here are the three people you're endorsing. All right, go ahead. Uh, Jeb Bush, yeah. Scott Walker, who I fucking hate. Yeah, he's I, fucking But he's, he's a legitimate character uh, candidate. Yeah, he's like, and, he has uh, a real Rubio. job, at least. Rubio, okay, yeah. I, even though there. Rubio uh, is... Rubio might have really fucked himself over the last couple of weeks over this Trump thing, because, like... What did he say? Like, well, he didn't... He basically sort of dragged his feet on it. And, like, I mean, yeah. and like you know, it's not like Trump came out and said, like, some Mexicans are bad people. I mean, he came out and said, like, all Mexicans are rapists. Are rapists. I don't know. Some of them are okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Like, verbatim. And, like, uh, and so the idea that people are like, well, yeah, I was taken out of context or something. No, it wasn't. It was like, yeah, it's, it's right in context and right, yeah. Like, what he meant to say, he said, and he said it very clearly. You can't, like, fucking mash this around. Like The greatest and also scariest thing about Donald Trump is that he is so consumed with this idea of like somewhat seeming or coming across looking like presidential and strong <laughs> right. that he doesn't give a fuck if he's right or not yeah like yeah. you know he'll just come back like he'll make a, he'll say a stupid thing and then he'll never walk it back right he'll just be like yeah in, in his mind he's thinking like well the you know the voters of america they need a strong leader and even if he's saying total bullshit right right well and every i mean like I mean, we forget that Donald Trump has been through this before and like done it like a, you know, five or six times or whatever now. And like uh, his campaign always lasts until the second they ask like the candidates to reveal their financial records, and then he's like, "I'm out." Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's my ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, who is that? George Washington. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, as soon as they uh, yeah they just say okay, you gotta like open up your financial records because that's the law. He's like. Uh, no thanks. And let's not forget, he was like the birther in chief. He well, was he was the main. Yeah, let's guy. not forget the hundred or so of dumb shit yeah, yeah. things he said over the last like twenty years. Anyway, you want to take a break? Yeah, let's. Are we do done that. like uh, trashing the Republicans? Yeah, I got to go give some money to Donald Trump. <laughs> so let's take a break. <laughs> I actually hope he stays in the race as long as possible. Oh, that'd be great. We that'd need to nice. siphon off as much comedy <laughs> from it. His, this lunatic is. Like, hopefully, like maybe he'll come on uh, John Stewart's like final show to announce he's quitting. <laughs> And like it'll just be like this, you know, the, this, uh, the, the the day that the comedy died. Hey, what about uh, Rand Paul? Do you think he's a serious candidate? No, no, I don't think no. so either. I mean, I, I, he's, yeah, I can't even like. I, I was gonna say like I, I I would take him as seriously as someone like Bernie Sanders or something like that, but I, I can't even take him that seriously. Like, Can I tell you like I know we have to take a break, but yeah. like one, I hate libertarians. Oh yeah, me too. Like I and, and this is someone who used to identify himself as one. But like, uh, yeah, like uh, it's like libertarian is, is is a few good ideas couched in a whole bunch of bad ideas. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. And if you're really passionate about those few good ideas, but unfortunately, like the few good ideas were like marriage equality and like you know pot legalization and stuff like that. Stuff that's already happening anyway. Yeah. So there's yeah. no you're absolutely obsolete now. <laughs> yeah. So it's like now unless I just really want to live in a shack in the middle of Alabama and shoot people to come near my next stoop. time. If anybody listening to this uh, comes in contact with a libertarian. Just like wait and see how long it takes them to like like you know, put on this air of superiority, right. where it's like if you disagree with some anything they say, 
they'll be like, yeah, well, you know, if you read a book uh, once in a while, they're like, they're always like, you know, right. looking down their nose intellectually <laughs> at other people, even while saying the craziest shit. Right, right. I, like, I, I thought you were gonna say like, uh, you know, give them, give them, uh, you know, a few minutes, and they'll eventually say something racist or like, you know, or, I mean, or sort of like, you know, like, like, uh, show their true hand for like, because you know, like a lot of it is very. Uh, um, uh, idealistic and something, you know, it's like, well, you know, like everybody, uh, everybody has the freedom, everybody has responsibility, like, you know, don't like, don't let anybody else take care of anybody else and like that, that'll be the best, like, you know, and it's like, that's not how it plays out though, like, you know, like people take a while to starve to death, people take a while to let, yeah, you know, and then that's yeah. when they turn to crime and like, you know, stuff like that, so it's not, you know, it's not as simple as like, uh, as, as libertarians make it sound. It's but. always like this thing where they're like, their attitude is, I have all the answers to everything, but people just won't listen to me because they're dumb. <laughs> right. And it's like, uh, yeah, that's that's going to get you far in life. Right. I mean, those are the people that that on like that are the worst like on on Facebook and stuff like that are the the people that like consider themselves like the the, the voice of reason for the entire internet. Where right. they're like, oh, you know, like you guys are all fucking like, you know, oh, you're oh, everybody's a sheep. Yeah, sheet. Every, you're all just lambs to the slaughter. I'm the only one that knows what's going on. I'm trying to tell you, and you're telling me I'm crazy. Oh, and, and if you if you just read the the material, <laughs> if, if you read the fucking propaganda, lunat lunatic stuff that I've read, <laughs> then you would understand. <laughs> exactly. All right, you ready to take a break? Yeah, let's let's do that. All right, this is SF Barcast, and we are at Elixir on 16th and Guerrero. <laughs> All right, and we are back at Elixir. The Elixir. Guerrero and 16th. The yeah, you heart, know, heart of the mission. I used to come down here. Uh, there was a short time, and I don't know why, but I was not going to the Kilowatt to watch football. <laughs> and I would come here. That sounds like a... That sounds like you got kicked out and you're just like covering it. I know, it, it does, doesn't it? Because every time, like, I, I. I decided not to go there for uh, six months. <laughs> 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 exactly, to the day. <laughs> and then I'll be allowed, I mean, I'll, I'll allow myself <laughs> to go back <laughs> in. Right. Then I'll uh, allow that bar to exist in my mind. But I used to come here and watch games with Adam Billington, who was a neighbor around here. Right. And we would sit in this very table and, like, sitting, there's like. You're in the catbird seat, like uh, the yeah. best seat in this in this bar, is right next to the window, where it's yeah. like you know if you're watching games, they had like uh, all the games on. They have like you know five, four for like TVs. A, yeah, for like a bar that like shows a lot of sports and stuff like that. There's a there's a, a shitload of like windows to the to the street. Yeah. Like which is you know which is good and bad depending on like what you're in the mood for. But if you're in the mood for watching like you know, fucking crazy idiots, like, uh, cross 60 in the Guerrero, then it's well, great. Well, that's the thing, like, the, the perch that you're sitting in here right next to the window, like, I mean, this is a while ago, too, so there were a lot more freaks in the mission. Yeah, yeah. Which is, like, always, like, like the mission was known for its people watching, and, right. you know, if you're watching the Niner game and they're getting blown out or something, you can always just look out the window and be more entertained. <laughs> right. Like, oh, my God, that's, like... Like how how is that even done? Like what what you know, what what are those people doing? Like now it's like the the most crazy thing you'll see. It's like, wow, that nerd seems to have a pretty hot girlfriend. You know, it's like that's true. Like, that's about yeah. it. Yeah, that uh, yeah. It, it used to be where it's like you know you see like, um, well, Kurt Weitzman used to have a joke okay. about the the hate, and it used to be true of the mission as well. Where he said, yeah, if you live in the hate, the one thing you never say is, well, you don't see that every day. He's like, because you do. <laughs> right. So, like, if after, like, you know, years of living in the mission when it was, like, you know, Freak Central, you look, look out the window, you're just like, that should shock, that would shock a different person. Like 20 people fucking a shopping cart? <laughs> I haven't seen that since Tuesday, now that I think about it. <laughs> uh, but this bar is, yeah, and for some reason I stopped coming to this bar. I think it was because of the prices of the, the alcohol. It does seem that, like, they, uh, and, it's, you know, I mean, this is, like, I mean, one of those bars that's close absurd. enough to your place that we've, you know, we, we've come here a lot, like, yeah. over the years, and, like, uh, um, yeah, it seems like they've definitely um, made the effort uh, to sort of rebrand this a, like, uh, uh, you know, semi-expensive cocktail bar with, like, you know, it's, like, yeah. they have a lot of events here, I feel like, where it's, like, you know, come taste, like, Poppy Van Winkle whiskey or whatever, you know, and, and, and so they were, they were doing that for a long time where they'd have, like, you know, two or three times a week, they'd have some special tasting of, like, you know, scotch they, or something. Like. They do a lot of events here. I'll say that. Yeah. I know they, they've had, like... Um, but I feel like a lot of that is, like, a lot of, like, tastings and stuff like that, that's 
so you can justify like the high prices when you're not having them. Well, you <laughs> know, when like, I say, oh, well, we're an event place, like you know. When I say they have the like high prices, I meant, I mean, it's not absurd to be honest. It's like a little bit higher than like other places. Yeah. But my biggest problem was uh, they never had Racer Five on tap here. Right. And like the uh, they used to have this bartender here that I hated. By the way, uh, Jamie, the bartender here now, is awesome. She's like, yeah, she's, you know, really she's nice. fantastic. Uh, but they used to have this old bartender here, and every time I tried to order a Racer 5, he would like be like, no, nah, man, we don't carry that. Like, kind of like give him the attitude. <laughs> like, pr- like, proud about it? Like, and then he, then he would say, like, you got to try this. Uh, this other stuff is better. It's called Old Speckled Hen. No oh boy. <laughs> and I was like, I, I fucked up. Like, like a couple, dead bird. <laughs> I fucked up a couple times, and I said, oh, really? Yeah, let's try that. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, he made it sound like it's comparable to uh, Racer, Racer 5. Racer 5. But, but it's cost absolute, like nineteen dollars or something, right? It, well, it's six bucks. <laughs> okay. And at the time, you could get a Racer Five at the kilowatt for three three seventy five. So right. it's like you know, if you're paying th- six bucks at a dollar tip, or like paying right, like, like five bucks, it's <laughs> like you know, it, you know, it's it's a no brainer. Well, and like plus coming from your apartment, you have to walk by, the, you know, you'd have you'd have to walk by the kilowatt to get here. So you'd like pretty much have to make the mental decision, you know, you know what, fuck Racer Five, I'm gonna spend the extra three dollars and get myself a, a old speckle pen. But the worst thing about it is that he kept making it seem like, yeah, this stuff is better than Racer Five, and right. like Racer Five is an IPA, so, and like the old speckled hen is like an English fine ale, so it's like so it's, it's totally different. Right, apples and oranges. <laughs> it's like, you know, so like you know, beer made whole, from apples versus beer made from oranges. Uh, so like was, I was saying that they have a lot of events here. I know that they have they have trivia that okay. uh, Sal Kalani used to do, but I know I don't know who does it now because yeah. Sal's moved to L.A. He's too big for this shit. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I'm getting out of this uh, SF trivia game. It's a dead end. <laughs> like, Enjoy it, Jeff. <laughs> and he is, oh, I don't know who does it now, but I know Joe Tobin used to fill in for Sal oh, wow. a lot here. Uh-huh. And it was, it was actually a really good trivia night, although Sal just read off his phone. <laughs> and like, I'm not saying that as like uh, in a derogatory way. Like Sal said to me, I was like, hey, how do you come up with your questions? He goes, I just read them off my phone. So... So is it, do people call him with questions, or did he, does he just formulate them based on, like, texts he has? No, he just goes to, like, a trivia like, website. And according to my it. friend uh, Joe, uh, where is he going to eat tonight? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this is uh, unfair. But I know they have, like, they have events where it's, like, they have, like, celebrity bartenders, or th- it's for charity, so it's not really celebrities. It's, it's like, like a, here's, here's a celebrity. Small quote celebrity. <laughs> it's like, celebrity bartender. Uh, the guy who lives down the street. <laughs> so the, the guy who bartends on Tuesdays is the bartending on Saturdays. And they used to have, like, a lot of other stuff. I remember when they first... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh. Uh, that's, that's, that's the other drawback about like this uh, this particular spot is that, <laughs> is that every once in a while somebody across the street and you'll just be like enough of that nonsense whatever you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know that they they used to have like when they first opened. I don't know if they, who the owners are now. I met a dude who was like a part owner. Like okay. Like you know, they had a lot of investors. So like you know if you threw in like ten grand you got like a half right. a percent or something like that. And. I know that like one of the main owners, or, when they first reopened, was went to BC. Uh-huh. So they would have for like BC hockey game. He was really into hockey. Hmm. So if there was a BC hockey game, like this place would be Boy, that's packed. A, that's a hard sell for like uh, San Francisco is like <laughs> college hockey. It's a hard sell for anyone to go to. He's like, hey, do you want to hang out with a bunch of Boston people who are watching hockey? <laughs> college wow. hockey, not even not pro hockey. <laughs> Like yeah. We're talking about 19-year-old kids. I'll go as long as everybody behaves themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go if uh, those assholes from Cornell aren't playing. <laughs> it's like if you bring in some like weird like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and like, there, there were other days where it's like, yeah, they'd always have like the BC game on. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> like, ah, oh, that's <laughs> that's unfortunate. But I do BC. like showing Doug Flutie uh, like replays. <laughs> But it's like weird about Bert, San Francisco. Bill Curley games. If you find, like in San Francisco, you can find anything like a like a bar that is like this is the home of like Brazilian form, Formula One. Yeah, which I like. I mean, like that's that's great. Like yeah, that you know the places like that exist. Like it's yeah, just sometimes you get uh, yeah you get people that are a little too into something that's a little too obscure. You know where it's a, yeah it's like hey I'm really into like. Uh, you know, West Indies cricket. So I'm gonna open a bar and see if this go about it. And everyone's like, mm, uh, it's all right. Like, 
Didn't really need one. Speaking of being obsessed with something really, really stupid, hmm. uh, last week was Canada Day. <laughs> oh, and just in time for them hosting the Women's World Cup uh, final That's today right. as well. And I went to I, my trivia. was it, We didn't have it this month because it was Canada Day. Oh. And like the <laughs> Is that another way of saying lack of interest? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 oh, my like, God. I'm sorry, Jeff. Uh, the, the trivia's turned into a real Canada Day. We can't do it anymore. <laughs> it does really like uh, bother me that like Canada Day gets more people <laughs> for, the, for their like make-believe holiday like, for a make-believe place. <laughs> we can't turn away the 20 or 30 people that show up for Canada Day just uh, you know, to play your trivia game. So, of course, I went down to the right spot for Canada Day for two reasons. A, to see who I got bumped for, right? <laughs> and to and B, to make strange brew as many times as you could <laughs> to make fun of Canadians. <laughs> Cuz you know, I went through all, most of my life loving Canada hmm. and now I think that they're all subhuman. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's not true. I mean, like I but you know me, Andrew. I'm a very progressive person. Like I'm so progressive, <laughs> I treat Canadians like they're real people. I know, yeah. That's that's <laughs> I, I I don't understand it myself. But uh Hey, if you can get along with them, that's great. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I just uh, you know, don't don't make you know don't allow them to marry <laughs> okay, Americans. That's all. Stay I away do. from the children. <laughs> uh, right. So I went out to the right spot, and like it's it's just it's basically poutine pride, you know. <laughs> and they're all just dancing, and like they're playing like just the war. Like, there's some good bands from Canada, well, and they're like just playing the worst. Tragically hip all night. <laughs> no, they're, they're playing uh, like Triumph. Oh God! Like, like Avril, why would you do that? Avril Lavigne, <laughs> like Helen and Reddy. I mean, the best thing they played <laughs> was Helen was Reddy, Australian. I'm thinking of Anne Murray. Anne Murray. Anne Murray. Yeah, yeah. Like, What's the <laughs> difference? <laughs> What's the difference? Uh, but they were playing like all oh, this like bad Canadian music, like Avril Lavigne and like Nelly Furtado, and, uh, <laughs> uh, and like you know, Broken Social Scene is a great Canadian band. Kevin Drew, right. Feist, all Canadians, right. all great. Arcade Fire. Like arcade Fire. The list didn't, goes on and on. Didn't play any Arcade Fire. Didn't play any new pornographers. Didn't play any broken like, social scene. So it's like shitty Canada Day. <laughs> right, exactly. It's like, you want to hear Lover Boy? We got Lover Boy. <laughs> That's right. We got, we got more Lover Boy than you can fucking stand. So. Uh, That's great. Well, speaking of music, um, I w uh, the Treasure Island uh, Festival is coming up. And mm -hmm. like uh, they announced their lineup. And uh, most of uh, most years, like the Treasure Island lineup is, is hit or miss for me. Like, uh, But, you know. There's always some decent, uh, uh, decent acts on it. This year, uh, Dead Mouse and The National and War on Drugs are three of the bands that are playing. Oh, The National is uh, good. Yeah, yeah and the War on Drugs is great. War on Drugs is great. Uh, Run the Jewels is probably like, uh -huh. like a New York rap outfit. Uh, something called Hudson Mohawk. I don't know. Sure, why not? Uh, it's, it's a difference between Hudson Hawk and I know, Hudson yeah, Mohawk. I was going to say, which I love, because it's a Hudson Hawk reference, which you don't see a lot in like uh, naming bands. Anything that like gets me thinking about Richard E. Grant, <laughs> I'm happy about. That's right. Sandra Bernhardt. <laughs> like, um, like people in, sitting in traffic saying, why does this happen to me? If any of our listeners are one, uh, thinking about going to either Treasure Island or... Outside lands, mm. I would uh, suggest going to Treasure Island. I love, yeah. like, I've been to Treasure Island maybe like five times. You've been to Outside Lands too, right? I went to Outside Lands for the first time last year, and mm. actually, I had a really good time. But the thing is, I have friends who work for the people who put it on, so like, I got like all these like you know VIP badges. Uh -huh. So let me tell you, if you have a chance to go to uh, Outside Lands and get VIP badges, do and, that instead. And <laughs> do that instead, right? Exactly. <laughs> but if you if you're if you're just gonna like. You know, buy a ticket. Like, uh, yeah, a chance to go and get a blowjob from Florence in the machine while you're at it, then do that. <laughs> I know. It's like, how could I not have a good time? I was, like, standing backstage at the uh, at the comedy tent, like, talking to T.J. Miller and uh, the guys from uh, Silicon Valley. Do you know that T.J. Miller had, like, a brain hemorrhage, like, when he was, like, 19 or something like that? Like, Is that why he's so fucked up? I think so. Like, like yeah, I, I don't know. That's, the, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> we'll, wait, we'll wait for the T.J. Miller episode for that one. Uh, I actually tried to watch... The uh, the last Transformers movie. Oh, geez. Last night. Yeah. I mean, and T.J. Miller's in it. And uh, oh, you know what? Like that's funny because I, I I heard uh, I think it was Doug Benson say like he he watched that movie until like uh, T.J. Miller died and then he turned right. it off and like or walked out of the theater. I think I fell asleep right after T.J. Miller died, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, he dies like 20 minutes into the movie. Right. So like, you know, get over it. It's not a T.J. Miller vehicle. Like I saw a list of the most like. The highest grossing movies of all time, like recently, uh -huh. and uh, and that movie is like top five. 
No. Like it is. I mean, and well, I mean, I think it has to be like uh, totally like not adjusted you know for adjusted for you know inflation or something because like because uh, yeah like all the top all the top movies are like the ones that have been released in like the last five years because like it goes it goes Avatar, because it costs like eighteen dollars to see a movie like yeah you know, and it and goes everything Avatar, it's like Titanic, um, the Avengers. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like, I think those are the top three. But like, but I think like two or three of the Transformers movies are in the top fifteen. We'll do. Which is I'll, crazy. I'll look like, it up. They're so terrible. During the uh, break, I'll look it up on Box Office Mojo. Mm. Uh, but I think a lot of it too, though, is that uh, the only movies that do like super, super well internationally are like you know, or action super films. action movies that yeah. are like yeah. You know, well, look at the. I track all that stuff every week and. Uh, the Mad Max movie, like, yeah. just now is making, getting to the point where it's making back its budget wow. domestically. But, like, it costs $150 million to make. It's probably made about $150 million in, a, in the U.S. And it's made, like, $400 million overseas. And it's because, like, action films are, they translate well. You know, yeah, you, sure, yeah. you get somebody to do the voices. And, and, but you know what they say, what doesn't translate well in uh, global markets? Comedies. Mm. Because senses of humor change. I was going to be more specific and say uh, Joe Gorman. <laughs> well, that's kind of a comedy and tragedy. <laughs> it's an action movie in its own right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like uh, comedies like don't do that well overseas because like sometimes like you know there's a lot of kind of like you know very specific types of humor oh, yeah. in I mean, like, like Anchorman. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you're going to show that in like Bangladesh. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Anything that's like referencing like. You know, using like deep '70s, '80s, like U.S. pop culture, like right. you know, flute cuts. solo. Why is a flute solo like, funny? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a good question, actually. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, it, but it works. <laughs> right. Totally. Um, well, well, and and so one of the other uh, musically speaking uh, things that that came up is that um, uh, so we did uh, an episode from the uh, the uh, uh, what is that called the um, the ne next to the Armory is it, is it called the Armory? The Armory Club. Like yeah. The, yeah, the Armory Club. Right. Um, uh, the Chemical Brothers are playing the Armory like oh. in, uh, at the in the end of uh, end of this month, actually. Wow! And uh, um, and I've never even heard of a concert happening there before. Like, I, I went mean, to I some some probably have, but I just haven't haven't ever been inside of it. So. It took a, it took a while. I always like wanted to go inside there, and I like you know last year I finally did, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's just like this massive. Like I can't. I thought I read a long time ago that they wanted to do concerts in there, but like it wasn't zoned for like a too much jizz everywhere. <laughs> it's like, yeah. We can't make this place like uh, adhere to code. Like it would take more more Clorox than the world has. It's like a slip and slide in there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, but I thought they said it wasn't like. Uh, safe because to get like a huge crowd of people in there, but like I went to uh, like a Game of Thrones party in there and mm. <laughs> did I wait? Did I just say that? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll edit that out. We'll, we'll put in like uh, you know, exactly. Friday Night Lights or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, it was even worse than like what I just said because it was like a Game of Thrones like costume. Oh my like, god! Uh, fundraiser, some shit like <laughs> Jesus that. Christ, like, you should just go kill yourself now. So it's just a bunch of people like <laughs> running around, like pretend, like saying winter is coming, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I, I need to get a drink. Uh, yeah, like, so is pizza by the look of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I heard like a long time ago that they uh, they couldn't have concerts in there because like it just wasn't like seismically upgraded or something mm. like that. So I guess they must have like fixed it because they got a bunch of fucking. You know, Game of Thrones nerds in there. <laughs> Although they probably were like, you know what? Who cares? <laughs> like, it's not, it's like, not safe, but who cares if they if it falls? It was said that the, uh, the the Chemical Brothers seemed good at, and like you know, I, I, I was I was a much bigger fan of the Chemical Brothers like in the nineties. You've probably or seen them like what fifteen times? No, like more than like yeah, you know, more like nine or maybe eight or nine times. But like um, but that's like you know over twenty years like at this point. So I mean like it's not you know it's not that many, but sure. like. Uh, but they've always been good at like sort of picking like weird venues. Like the, the uh, when they played with uh, New Order, they went to oh the, yeah uh, Henry um, Kaiser yeah the Henry Kaiser in yeah. Oakland. I was there, and uh, um, and that's another place where it's like this huge thing that nobody ever plays concerts. It's in. like a big gym. Yeah, it's, and, and like you know it's a good it's a good spot for it. And uh, um, and I feel like the Armory will kind of be the same way. But like one thing that I did hear about like this concert, which kind of I don't know gave me pause or whatever, was. Um, like that they so they announced the concert and everything and like sold tickets and then like about a week ago, they said like oh and uh, by the way like uh, one of the guys in the Chemical Brothers decided not to go <laughs> or not to show up, like uh, yeah like basically like uh, like he's not joining them for the tour so it's like it's like one uh, yeah, it's the like Chemical Bro, 
Well, it's like one. It's like uh, the, the the blonde one uh, is going to be there, and like uh, and then like the guy that does like the visual effects like will be standing next to him <laughs> instead of like back at the booth or whatever. I was going to tell everybody you should go see the Chemical Brothers if you haven't seen them. But like not now. I mean, like I mean, it's not like well, they do that whole lot on stage. Oh no, uh, hardly anything. Yeah. And like, but that's I mean, what what that sort of led to me thinking was like, is this sort of like a watershed moment for? Because like, I mean, if if anybody's not familiar with the Chemical Brothers, you know, it's I mean, they're an electronic group. They like you know, essentially, yeah, they, they jump around a lot and like yeah, and 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 push buttons and stuff like that. But as anybody that like has you know performed as a DJ or anything like that will like testify. They don't do fucking anything. Like, you know, they, they, you know, they're there just to like, sort of like, you know, rise up the crowd and, and, but literally, like, they push a button and everything's like pre-programmed. Pre I mean, the, but the reason why you go to one of those concerts, whether it's the Chemical Brothers or Justice, is because so it's like the music's good and you like yeah. to dance. Exactly. Yeah. You know. But like, but that sort of got to me, me, me to thinking though, like, is is this sort of a watershed like moment, like, you know, for you know that style of music where it's like, you know what, like, we've been putting on this like charade long enough. Like, you know, can we? Can we just stay home and like send you guys the music and like uh, and you guys can dance to that? Although <laughs> you, know, you know it is a scene. Yeah. You know? It is a scene, but 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 the scene is like probably of like the visual uh, effects coordinator and like uh, audio yeah. guys like setting it up. Like it's mostly their scene. Like you know, if, yeah. if the music's already done. But I like mean, uh, you know, but it's just kind of weird that like because you know it's not like one of the Chemical Brothers is more. Uh, outspoken or more sort of like you know in the news Ooh. than the other one. He he's the talkative one. <laughs> yeah, so so it's like if either one of them took the tour off, it wouldn't really make a difference. But it's like I can't think of any other band where like where like right. you know, if 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 you if you you know if you went to see like U two or something like that and uh, and like Bono and the Edge weren't there, <laughs> and, like and they, and they, yeah. but and they announced that like three days after you bought tickets and and it was su and it was a total like you know. Like that was the funny thing about the announcement was like it was so nonchalant. It's like, oh, half the band isn't coming. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, and and that literally means nothing because like I won't hear a different show because that guy yeah. isn't there. I just won't get to see him push a button. I think it would like, it would it gives like ammunition for people who are critical of mm. the electronic music. But like if you're somebody who actually goes to those shows, you're probably like, yeah, not a big deal. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going there to dance and like fucking hang out with people and take right. ecstasy. <laughs> And so, like, I don't care if it's, like, a janitor on stage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, uh, yeah, so, so th th that'll, mean, uh, that'll be interesting. I mean, like, it, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it will be a great show. Uh, but at the same time, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it did give me sort of a pause to think about, like, what the future of, like, sort of electronic music shows might be like. Because there's really, mean, you know. If I was it, into that music, I would still go, regardless of, like, what, oh, if, like, you know, one yeah. of the guys isn't there, just because. And that's like, sort, you know, sort of many, what they realized, I think. At, you know, at, at some point, they realized, oh, wait, like, they're not paying to come see us in the flesh. They're just paying to come and dance and have a good time. Right, like, exactly, because it's a scene. Like, you want to, like, you know, yeah. it's like a rave. Like, you go to the rave to fucking, like, you know, dance right. around. <laughs> but it's like there's never, there's never going to be any stories about, like, ooh, I was at that uh, Chemical Brothers show in Altamont when they, uh, <laughs> when they when they went, went unplugged, when they get, like, got out of control, yeah, exactly. uh, when, they, when they did all their songs on acoustic guitars. Um, all right, so uh, the last thing I'll say about music before we take a break is like I was saying that Treasure Island Treasure Island is the better of the two festivals in San Francisco. Uh, also, like Treasure Island tends to get like uh, bands uh, before they get big. Well, I don't know if that's the. It, it used to be back in the day where treasure you would go to Treasure Island see bands in uh, in a smaller stage, mm. and uh, then like at Outside Lands they'd be playing like a year later at Outside Lands. Uh, but I feel like Outside Lands now has so many fucking stages yeah. that like they like they have they, they have small stages for bands that nobody's heard of. It's like if you and I could get a fucking like set, <laughs> set the, on some of the really small stages. Yeah, so look for SF Barcast at this year's Outside Lands Festival. Breaking news: We're <laughs> playing Outside Lands. Maybe like, like maybe that's the way we could get in is just like tell everybody that we're there, and then like the public demand will be so great that they'll have to let us perform. We're pl we're uh, performing on the uh, parking lot stage. <laughs> <laughs> performing on the uh, none of your business stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, you want to take a break? Sure. All right, this is SF Barcast, and we are at Elixir in the Mission. Well done. Yes, not, yes, it will. All right, and we are back at Elixir. At the Elixir on on what I am looking at, the corner of Guerrero and 16th, and 
I'm surprised not, you can even concentrate with watching the, all, all the people you know walking what? by. It's not nearly as good as it used to be. Like, yeah. I mean, it used to be like there was probably one or two things every like five minutes. Like <laughs> that you would uh, you would have to stop your drink for a second and be like, Ooh, look is, at that! <laughs> like, like, <laughs> what is that homeless guy having sex with? That's yeah. Like, most of most of the time, that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, who, what, what is that guy taking a dump on that he should? That guy's going to impregnate that uh, shopping cart. <laughs> so, you know what? Like, uh, what I was like thinking about during the break is like, uh, they. I think uh, Jamie, the bartender, is playing a bunch of like country music. Yeah. And like, I was like, oh yeah, like, this is weird because like nobody plays country music. Like, it's. And right. then I just realized it's only weird for like if you're in like a big city. Yeah. Like country music is like this thing where you're it's like, oh, you're doing the, you're you're doing this ironically or it's it's right. weird that somebody would I'm be sure country somebody music. listens to that music, probably people in Stockton or something. You go like 10 miles outside of any big city and right. you're, it's nothing but country music. Oh god, like and and like a, a city like uh like and it may have it may have changed a little bit since like uh um since I uh since I lived there, but like I lived in Portland for a little while and uh and like Portland, Oregon, like you could go you could find a country bar in the middle of like the the most hipster neighborhood in the city because like yeah and and it, and and essentially if you went anywhere outside of the city like even remotely outside of the city or still still called portland like uh you you would find nothing but country bars like right and like on my motorcycle trip across the country it's like man like every bar was a country country bar right you know and uh, i remember having a conversation with a friend here a while ago and I was, we were, there was a bunch of us, and I said, uh, yeah, there's, uh, is there a country, country band, uh, bar in San Francisco? And uh, someone's like, yeah, I don't think so. And I was like, no, no, wait, there, there's one. It's called uh, Rawhide, and it's on, mm. like, uh, like, 9th or 8th. And uh, one of the guys was like, yeah, that's a gay bar. Oop. <laughs> it's like, like, ooh, that would have been. Imagine if, like, you were from out of town, and because like, there's a lot of tourists that come to San Francisco. <laughs> and, you know, the one's like, I would like to go to a good old country boy bar. <laughs> and you go to, like, Rawhide, right. and everybody's like, got assless chaps. <laughs> it's like, you want to well, ride the bull? Yeah, but I don't see a mechanical bull. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, the kind of thing where, like, the name of the bar should have given it away. Where it's like, I yeah, know. Well, I felt stupid. Like, 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 like what, about, oh. what about dick suckers? <laughs> Is that a good bar? <laughs> it's the white swallow. <laughs> uh, the... But like yeah, so it's uh, it's weird. <laughs> I got I got nothing. I'm sorry. I've I've been so like distracted because uh, I have a, a brand new addiction, and it's this game called Ingress. I've I've uh, have you heard of this? I have heard of it, and like you, you've uh, you've you've shown me a little bit of it. Um, unfortunately, like uh, it, it it does seem to be much more of a uh, um, in the city rather than suburban game for sure. Yeah, I mean. Like, I mean yeah. It's a game that's get it's played all over the world, right. but it's better. It's best if you like live in a place like the the Mission or San Francisco somewhere where you do a lot of walking. Right. It's basically a sci-fi GPS game, and you're and you're surrounded by uh, uh, com com computer dorks that will play it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, no like, offense. <laughs> none taken. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! I, I insult people now. I'm the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's like this game that syncs up. You play it on your smartphone, and it syncs up with your GPS. And then it's basically an exercise game that is like um, it's an exercise app that is like masqueraded as a like a sci-fi game. Right. And you walk around, and Google put it out, and they designated a bunch of like what they call portals in, around the globe. And you walk around, and you take possession of those portals and then you can fortify them with like different things like items you pick up it's a lot like dungeons and dragons but it's like it's more like a dungeons and dragons like turf war game yeah well and also you're like in the real world instead of your parents basement <laughs> yeah it's nice. true like yeah you i mean actually you do have to walk around so like that that all the dungeons and dragons people they're right out <laughs> Uh, so well, either that or it's just flushing them all out into the uh, you know, into the real world, which is, is going to be uncomfortable for everybody. That's true. It's like, yeah, uh, like, what are all these like uh, <laughs> these bo smelling nerds doing? Uh, yeah, you know, away from their parents' basement. Everybody complains about like nerds like that, like living in their parents' basement. But you'd rather have them there or like walking the streets <laughs> with impunity. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, and, well, that was like the, the the great like news story I saw like too was like that uh, they they they've run into a little bit of trouble because like uh, they. They oh, put ingress. some of the uh, yeah, like uh, the makers of Ingress, like uh, um, like put some of the uh, the portals 
in, I mean, like, you know, they're all sort of, you know, well, they're not, like, total landmarks, but, I mean, like, it's it's something that, like, landmarks people can people. see. Uh, and, and I guess one of them is, like, a Dachau in Germany. And, yeah. Like, yeah. And, you know, they're, they're, like, you know, concentration camps where it's, like, you can't really, like, uh, expect that uh, during the tour, like, you know, three or four people are going to be, like, yeah, enough about the Jews, but where is the portal? <laughs> exactly. Uh, can you be quiet for a second? I'm trying to, like, you know, fight this portal. It's like, blah, blah, blah. Jesus Christ, you'll never shut up about the six million Jews, but you won't tell me where the portal is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm playing a uh, sci-fi game. <laughs> uh, like, I'm sure whatever you're talking about is really important. So if any of our listeners are interested in playing that, especially if you live in the mission, please sign up and join the blue team. There are two mm. types of people in the world, I've realized, and there's <laughs> blues and greens. And... Uh, uh, play for the blue team, and we've got a pretty strong like uh, mission presence on is, Ingress. Now, the blue team is the alliance. Is that no? The, uh, the blue uh, team is the resistance. The resistance. I'm sorry. And the green team is the enlightened. Ooh. So they both both the names of them are have, you know, their benefits. You know, their nice their course. appeal. Although, like my whole take is like, if you have the chance to choose between like someone who calls themselves the enlightened yeah, or, really, the, or, like. the, or the resistance, <laughs> it's like you go with the resistance, right? Did yeah, did you like, not see Star Wars? <laughs> Like, who's the, uh, like, you know, egotistical asshole that, like, joins the uh, the enlightened? Like, ooh, look at me. I'm, like, ooh, I'm fresh so out of college, and I know everything. I'm going to move to the mission <laughs> so I can take it over with my ingress. <laughs> I wonder how many of the ingress portals are in people's, uh, people's basements. <laughs> yeah, probably most of them. Uh, but, yeah, it's super addictive. And, like, you know, I, I tend to, I like games, so I tend to, like, get, like, as soon as I start playing it, I'm, like, I have to master this. Yeah, so yeah. I, I've gone pretty far, pretty fast. And, like, some of the people I've told about that look at me kind of like, what are you create? Like, some, like, you know, they give me, look down their nose at me. And these are, and to me, it's just a game. But, like, my take is yeah, exactly. some people would think it's, like, a total waste of time. I look at them and I go, look, you go to church. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I win. <laughs> so, like, I don't, I don't want to fucking, like, you want to have this argument? Okay, right. yes, I play a game. You believe in God. Okay? <laughs> That's right. You, you treat people nice so you can go to heaven someday. <laughs> the only difference is I actually have interactions with the game. Right. You, you don't have any interactions <laughs> with this, like, the, you, the, the, this person who lives on a castle in the clouds. <laughs> right. The only difference is that, like, uh, conceivably, I could meet the designer of the game someday. You will never meet God because he doesn't exist. <laughs> there you go. That's Good a waste. Day, sir. That's a waste of time. <laughs> I'm going to church. <laughs> uh, excellent. So, so what uh, is, uh, uh, speaking of games, what is uh, what, what, what's you know? I know this is the uh, doldrums of the of the sports year. It's the absolute worst uh, time of the oh, sports year. It's so awful. Like, it's it, nothing uh, but like baseball. I keep turning on the TV, thinking like, okay, like. I just have to, like, surf around. I'll find some good sports event to watch. And then, like, it's, you know, four channels of baseball and five channels of, like, you know, the this, Kardashians. Yeah, this is the only time of year where you'd be, like, channel surfing and you'd be like, ooh, rally cross. <laughs> I'll like, watch of that. CrossFit fitness. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> like, so, yeah. I, <laughs> my girl shows, sure does know how to do uh, chin-ups. <laughs> I'll say that much. <laughs> I want to find out who's the best at exercise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, although, you know, we have the Women's World Cup. That's true. That's yeah, going yeah. on right now. And actually, I've enjoyed watching some of those games. Yeah. Sorry, you, like, you, I think I was saying you this. squint your eyes enough. You can pretend they're dudes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think maybe because I don't, like, watch soccer that much. But, like, I feel like the, the women's game is just as entertaining as the men's game. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, like I said, I don't, like, you know, I don't have a fine-tuned eye for, like, you know, appreciating soccer. Right. But, but like, it, anyway. it's, I mean, like, not, not to sound terrible, but, like, uh, I, that's not the, the, the same when it comes to, like, basketball. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. if I'm watching, like, the men's game, watching the women's world, the women, the WNBA, it's, to me, it's, like, vastly different. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you're talking, I mean, just, just in, in, uh, in terms of speed and height. I mean, like, because, I mean, and essentially that's, that's what makes basketball entertaining is, is, is speed and height. And, like, and unfortunately, the ability like, to you know, dunk. Unfortunately, like you know, due to genetics, uh, due you to know, the male players are you know can jump faster and move yeah you know, or, or jump higher and move faster I should say and like uh, and it's you know uh, I would say more entertaining game. Do you want to dig that hole any deeper, Andrew, <laughs> yeah, or do you want to just move on? Uh, uh, yeah, let's uh, move on. Okay, so we have nothing but baseball, but in times like this, we as sports fans grasp for anything, and we had the NBA free agency, which mm. honestly I feel I find it very entertaining. I was gonna say like even if we even if we were both like super into baseball, uh, the 
like the like the three worst teams in the American League right now are like the Red Sox, the the, the, the Mariners, and the A's. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> as far as we're concerned, like baseball doesn't <laughs> right. exist. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I just uh, I hope uh, you know planes crash into every stadium while the game is <laughs> That's all I'm rooting for. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I went to a uh, A's game the other day, and I realized that there are two portals inside the Coliseum for oh, ingress. Nice. And of course, like uh, me and uh, my buddy took them over. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, that, like, that, I mean, like, uh, you're gonna watch this? There's a no hitter going. You guys are like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to defend this portal. <laughs> exactly. Um, I gotta, I gotta go uh, batten down the snack bar before anybody gets to it. <laughs> So who were the big winners and losers during, A, the uh, NBA draft and NBA free agency, Andrew? Uh, well, certainly certainly the uh, Sacramento Kings have not come out of this smelling like a rose. As Chris Mannix put it, that place is a dumpster fire. <laughs> it really is. Like, they cannot, they can't, they can't land anybody. Like, they can't, they can't lure anybody to move to Sacramento right, for like a good I, reason. I, th I think I've never been happier that, like, a, uh, a, possibly defunct franchise didn't move to Seattle like yeah oh. where it's like you know, you if, know? If, if, if you know maybe it'd be different ownership and they would like you know what to do with it but like the uh, the guy that's running the uh, the Kings right now like yeah like there's just yeah it's like this revolving door of coaches George Carl was there like four months and they like you know fired him and like his contract was for like four like they're just like they're it's like they're using like the New York Knicks playbook on how to like ruin it. like yeah, and then, and yeah. it's not even like the Sacramento Kings were in anywhere near the situation the New York Knicks ever were, and like but they're trying to like you know ruin it anyway anyway like yeah. The thing is like they're they're definitely they're they're trying desperately to be competitive in the free agent market, right. and the thing is like the team sucks, yeah. so like. It's one thing like See, team, the, the team has two things going uh, like going against it. It sucks and it's in Sacramento. Right, exactly. So like, <laughs> if a team sucks and like you know there are players that they offered like huge contracts to and the players accepted less They're money. Like, I'm team. not gonna go play in the minor leagues. <laughs> they, they, uh, I think his name Wesley Hoffman. Uh, he I think he believe he took less money to not play in Sacramento. Right. So it's like what is going on here? Like uh, I mean and, and it sucks because like although who's running that that team? It's like. Shaq is like a part owner. Devots is the GM. Right. And uh, like they're, that they're crazy Indian guy that like owns the, like the. Their main owner is yeah. this dude who uh, thinks he knows about basketball because he coached his his girls, his, <laughs> his young girls like you know middle school team. <laughs> right. And so like you know it is it's, it's just a disaster down there. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. thing is like they want like they had George Carl and George Carl said like he wanted to move Boogie Cousins who's their best player right. because he thought he was just like a cancer and it wasn't going to like go well so it was like a standoff so they were like we're going to we're going to get rid of so suddenly like when they couldn't move Boogie Cousins they had to get rid of George Carl they couldn't right. keep both these both these guys are really good yeah, co yeah. good coach good player sure, sure. but like then they had to get rid of one of them right and uh now it's just a fucking uh, it, it's a disaster. Are there any winners? Oh, do you know what? Also, who else is a loser? The L.A. Lakers. Like, they yeah. they missed out. They tried to get, like, Greg Monroe to come out there, right. uh, LaMarcus Aldridge to come out there. I thought they were going to get uh, Aldridge, actually. Like, I mean, because like, I, I thought that they're – I thought maybe their, like, long-term plan was, like, okay, we get we get Aldridge, and then, like, we use Aldridge to, like, lure Kevin Durant and say, yeah. like, Yo, yeah, you guys both went well, to Texas. You got, you know, like, put the I band think, back together, all that shit. I think they – Basically, they didn't go 100% into this free agency frenzy because they knew, um, like, Kobe's, like, contract is off the books next year. Mm -hmm. So, and that's when Durant becomes a free agent. And right. so, like, they're kind of like, even if we lose this year, we can really put the full court press on next year's free agents right. and maybe land somebody even better. Yeah, possibly. You know? but still, I mean, like, yeah. Like, I'm it, amazed that Aldridge went to uh, – I'm, I'm amazed that Aldridge went to – San Antonio Spurs, yeah. for like he signed like a five-year contract mm. and Love signed a five-year contract those two guys are idiots because <laughs> the there's like more money that's going to be yeah, going around next year all you have to do is wait one year sign a one-year contract right right I mean like dude like who the fuck who's their man their agent like their like, cousin like both of them must be somewhat concerned about injury and like I, just, just sort of, you know, well like, even over the course of one or two years like, um yeah. Love is definitely concerned about injury because yeah. he had his well, shoulders up. Aldridge is older. I mean, like, he's not, like, super old, but, like, he's... I mean, like, I think Aldridge went to uh, San Antonio because he's because he's just a Texas guy. 
yeah. Te- Texas Forever, you right. know, like one of these like Friday night like. Well, skies. I bet like like people were saying that uh, Tim Duncan put like the press on him hard and was like saying like, you'll be like you know heir apparent to me. I'll fucking teach you. You know, like you that know, team's like, gonna you be know. good next year. Oh god, yeah, like yeah. Like, and you know Ginobili, Ginobili's contract is up, but like Ginobili's not gonna go anywhere. No. Where's Ginobili gonna go? Right. <laughs> Where's he gonna go? Like Argentina? Hey, go go eat a fucking empanada. Shut your empanada hole, Ginobili. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is he going to uh, uh, Anybody, anything else? Uh, uh, Grateful Dead? I guess you know, the Grateful uh, Dead? one of the other winners I thought was the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, yeah, um, they got Greg Monroe. They, they got Monroe. They got uh, Jabari Parker coming back. They got, like, They're going to be good. MCW. Um, yeah, like, that, yeah, that, that, like, for, yeah, I think, like, Milwaukee's, like, sort of doing what Sacramento, like, should have done. Like yeah, for a small market team, like yeah, it's like, like you have to sort of know who you are to some extent, and like I don't think Sacramento has any idea who they are at all. The thing is, like traditionally, the the Bucks have not been like a like a winning franchise, but like you know they definitely are getting they have a bigger upside than like Sacramento. Yeah. Like they're not a good team, but right. they've got like a lot more potential. I think like. I think they've got a bigger upside than like the Timberwolves or something like that for sure. Timberwolves are going to be good though. I mean, they'll, they'll be good, but like not at the rate. Like I, I think like Milwaukee's made like a few good moves in a row, and like Minnesota's made like one or two in a row. I'd say like in the next like the Timberwolves. It's it's so hard in the West. I would like to say in the next like four year like you know three or four years the Timberwolves will make the playoffs. Mm. But it's so hard in the West because when you look at the West, you kind of like okay, so who's going to drop out? Yeah, exactly. You're like, you know, so you're like, like oh, like so the Lakers, Phoenix, are, and Utah, and everybody else is going to continue to suck and like and plus we have to like leapfrog like you I know mean the who San Antonio is like, not going anywhere yeah exactly um like even the yeah. seventh or you know six and seven seeds last year were pretty much like number one seeds like you know the only team that I could see like dropping out of the playoffs oh I mean like New Orleans is, go- is probably going to stay around six, seven or eight um, but I mean they did the smartest thing they could they locked up like well, Anthony Davis and like yeah but like so yep. they have to improve. The only probably. team I can see like falling out of that those eight spots is Dallas. Yeah, I think. Or they did will. did uh, Portland make it? Yeah, I can see Portland. Like, no, Portland. Yeah, Portland, you know, Portland like, will drop Port- out. Yeah, Portland probably will drop out, which is unfortunate. Without LA. I like I like Damian Lillard a lot, and like yeah, and and there's no more snake bitten franchise like uh, you know on the planet than the, the, the Trailblazers. Well, uh, well, the Browns are the Trailblazers. Like yeah, like I yeah. If you name like a center bust from the last twenty years, chances are they played for the, uh, the Portland yeah, Trailblazers. That's true. <laughs> like, it's just ridiculous. And like, yeah, and uh, being a sort of like grown-up Sonics fan, that should bring me a lot of joy. But like, at this point, it doesn't. Like, is it's there any talk about the Son- uh, Seattle getting a team again? Just every time, like every time, uh, they they uh, have to like strong arm the uh, the city into giving uh, them a new stadium. Like a team like threatens to move to Seattle, so like, so one would think that like eventually like uh, a city will be smart enough to be like fuck you, <laughs> build your own stadium and then they'll they'll move there. Because like the the most recent one was the Bucks and like that would I mean like at this point that, that would be great. fantastic. Yeah. Like yeah, and and even when the Kings were talking about moving there, like I would I would have accepted a few years of Demarcus Cousins just for the fun of watching him or whatever. Yeah, it's although I feel like you like if it, if it was a better like owner. Yeah. And GM. Like, the best thing you could do is, like, you know, he, him sell the team to You're somebody right, right, in right. Seattle and then, you know, know give, you know, <laughs> give, like, fire, like, uh, bloody divots. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is, is probably the uh, another another team that might be, like, poised to, uh, to sort of drop out of the top eight if they lose Durant is obviously Oklahoma City. And, like, you know, yeah, it's like, Oklahoma yeah, they, City. And they don't have any I – don't th- I don't think they have any long-term plan that makes any sense. Where did DeAndre like Jordan go? Is he? Did no. he resign with the Clippers? He re- no, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, he, did he go to? He, uh, he might have gone to Dallas. I, uh, I'll have to look that up. That could be. Like, like that's sad. Like, uh, like for as much as like uh, Mark Cuban goes nuts and like you know and and posits himself as this great owner, like that. I mean that that team is sort of becoming like you know a uh, lonely island, if you will. Like you know, like there's just you know there's. They're sort of they, they make a few grasping moves every year and like the uh, Rondo move I think probably really hurt them a lot. I mean like oh yeah, they totally like, did. Now Rondo's playing for the dumpster fire, <laughs> <laughs> right? The Sacramento dumpster fires. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, you want to take a break? Yeah, we should. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll do some bad Yelp reviews, yeah, and uh, maybe you can give uh, your prediction for the uh, women's World Cup game. Ooh, that'll be. 
uh, no. Like it's, uh, yeah, the U.S. is playing uh, Japan. So luckily, uh, no one will uh, be able to go place a bet based on my prediction, That's which true. will probably be wrong. I predict that the uh, the U.S. team goes atomic on uh, Japan. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I don't get it. <laughs> get a big picture of Harry Truman at, at the game. There's <laughs> <laughs> a guy about to cross the street wearing a uh, Chicago Bulls Steve Kerr jersey. <laughs> So like he's he's working on all kinds of levels. Like he's like, <laughs> it's like I'm gonna be I'm gonna like Chicago fans are gonna love me. Like uh, Warriors fans are gonna love me. Everybody's gonna love me. Everybody's gonna, <laughs> Everybody's love, me. gonna love me. My mom's gonna love me. Oh wait, he just got hit by a car. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know who doesn't love him? Motors. <laughs> all right, this is SF Barcast. We'll be back at Elixir. Hey. All right, and we are back at Elixir. The Elixir. Andrew, are you having a good time? Yeah, it's all right. I mean, like you know, it, it's it's funny. Like, uh, I feel like uh, I, I feel like we, not that we've been here like a ton, but like we've been here enough times to where that like this doesn't feel like a uh, special occasion necessarily. It just feels like a you know, like if there were football on TV, I'd be like, oh, this is just an average Sunday. <laughs> but the, but there's not because it's the middle of summer. But. Yeah, I mean, there's hardly anybody in here, which I'm really surprised for. Although we are roll uh, rapidly approaching the. Game time. Women's World Cup uh, right. final. So, so I'm sure it'll just fill up uh, immensely once that starts. <laughs> uh, do you have any predictions? Do you want do you want to take a team in the uh, – not to be all uh, Pete Rose on you, but uh, <laughs> do you want to, like, take a team in the finals? Uh, sure. I'm going to uh, – I'm going to – just to be a, an asshole contrarian, I'm going to take uh, Japan 3-2. Uh, 3-2? to two. Three to two? Yeah. Uh, I'll take – I'll take the U.S. one to one. One to one. <laughs> All right. Penalty kicks. It is. Do they go to penalty kicks in yeah. the uh, finals? Yeah. In fact, that's how the uh, the U.S. lost the last World Cup to Japan in penalty kicks, after being uh, uh, ahead, I think, like with three minutes to go. This is, so this is like Ali Frazier two. Uh, yeah, with less monkey calling. <laughs> <laughs> that's a reference to uh, <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Yeah, exactly. Not Just in case anybody's starting to write a letter. That didn't come from Andrew's head. It's something that uh, Muhammad <laughs> Ali said. That's right. I'm not racist. I'm just quoting Muhammad Ali. Uh, That's been said a million you, times, I bet. Would you like to do bad Yelp reviews? Let's uh, do, we can do that, sure. I actually I really wanted to do one for this because uh, I'm pretty, like, I've had a couple of bad experiences here. So I think, like, oh, the Yelp reviewers, they'll, they'll be some interesting shit here. <laughs> right. But um, I don't know. It's pretty standard. But you, why don't you go first? Uh, let's see. Well, I have uh, Sam E. And once again, this is uh, Yelp reviews of only one star. Well, yeah, of course. We don't. And we don't. I'd like to uh, remind everybody, this is only an exhibition, not a competition. Please, no gambling. I would like to remind everybody that if you uh, fill out a Yelp review that's uh, between two and four stars, you're wasting your goddamn time. That is like As the, usual. That's the thing that like always like blows my mind is when you see somebody who writes like a two or a three star review and it's massive. <laughs> right. It's like, I have very mediocre feelings about this place, but I want to make sure everybody knows exactly what they are. Right. What a wa- talk about waste of time. Why, go play Ingress, go to church. Right. It's like people, uh, people looking for a place to, uh, to go drink are going to be like, you know what, like, uh, I don't really believe in five star reviews. I don't really believe in one star reviews. I, I'm going to find the most impassioned three star review I can find. And that's, yeah, that's where I'll go. Okay, so anyway, Sam E, uh, location not given, uh, says that she came here with a couple of friends and had a horrible experience both times. Uh, this is not a place with a full bar if you're looking for variety, which it is. And it they, actually is a full bar. Yeah. Oh, uh, you, may, you know what? I'm willing to bet what she was looking for was a blended drink. Probably, because she said with our minds set on a particular drink, which she doesn't mention, uh, the, bartender, the, beach. <laughs> the, the bartender was incredibly rude and told us to act like we've been in a bar before, <laughs> which I like. I give, I give the bar credit for that if they actually said that. Uh, all, we wa- all we was look at each other and ask what other drinks we should get, not even five seconds after we found out that they did not have some ingredients needed for a particular drink we wanted. The bartender only acknowledged us politely and apologized after I said that he didn't deserve a tip. Like... <laughs> One star. Which so like so it sounds like the bartender was very nice and well, explained to them probably very uh, slowly and you know and in great detail, said like we don't have a blender here, we don't make 
uh, this isn't Margaritaville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, so uh, why don't you act like you've been in the mission before and order a whiskey or something, you dumb cunt. Wait, did she, uh, it, it part, like, I wasn't paying attention, but like, uh, <laughs> was, did she say uh, that like even after I explained what the drink was? No, actually, oh. like they, they noticed that they had the, uh, or they, they didn't have the correct ingredient. Well, th yeah, this, this whole thing makes no sense and was obviously written drunk. <laughs> Because yeah. like yeah, you know, she basically like misspells a bunch of stuff and says like, you know, we came here and like we, yeah, I ordered like a fucking fuck me up against the wall slowly, gentle <laughs> like yeah, you know, style and like and yeah, you know, with extra flaming umbrellas in it and they didn't know how to make it. <laughs> they don't make it like uh, they they don't make it like that. You remember it in back in Cornell. <laughs> they, don't, they don't make it like the experts at Dave and Buster's. <laughs> uh, so mine comes from Greg P. Uh, one star, very disappointed. Had enjoyed ourselves at Elixir a few times, but last weekend we went to the bartender, and, and the bartender was a complete jerk. When well, this, some, is a, like, this is a one star review. Like, that, that seems really unfair to like to say in your review. I've been somewhere like a few times, and I've always liked it. But, but like, there's one time, yeah, one time out of ten, it wasn't any good. One star, you suck. <laughs> like, Maybe the bartender was going through some heavy shit. Maybe he just like be. paid for his girlfriend's abortion or something, and he's like not like feeling cheery or Maybe something. Maybe this customer looks like the guy he just walked in like on fucking his girlfriend. <laughs> it's yeah, like, exactly. You don't know. Cut him some slack because if you've if you've had multiple like good times at a place, yeah, and like one time the guy doesn't like you know like step in line. Yeah, try to, try to use some uh, some mathematics averages if you know how to do that, Mister Mister Tech Genius. So Greg goes on to say, when someone from our group asked a few questions about the drinks on the menu, he responded by interrupting her and saying, quote, I can't handle you right now. Next. <laughs> <laughs> See, oh, both of these reviews contain, like, you know, like, uh, bartender, like, uh, you know, responses that I, I, I enjoy thoroughly. I have to admit, like, you know. Like, they could easily be in a good review for me. Like, it would be like, yeah. like, the bartender was awesome. He told these one people to go fuck themselves. <laughs> yeah, when, like, uh, looking at all, like, the one-star reviews, they almost all have to do with, like, bad, like, uh, like, bar oh, bad. Well, it's like, like it's always, like, last call. Attentive enough. Yeah, it's always, like, last call. They wouldn't let me in or, like, you know, 2.30 in the morning, the bartender was a dick and wouldn't make me a banana daiquiri. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, but that one actually sounds pretty cool because, like, you know, hey, I told a story about being here once and the bartender was a jackass. Right. I mean, the bartender now, Jamie, is great. Uh, but, like, you know, who knows? Like, may maybe this is just what they had. Maybe they were all just talking about the same bartender. Right. Okay, so he says, I can't handle you right now. Next. A minute later, when she tried to order her drink, this rude bartender said, quote, no, I can't deal with you right now. <laughs> so apparently he cannot deal with her right, right now. Yeah. Uh, Which actually seems pretty polite because he's, he's basically saying, like, I I'll be able to come back to you at some point, but right now you're just too full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he was hungover where you're just right. like, look, like, I uh, just can't. You're like, I'll, I've got a hangover and you're like this fucking like ray of sunshine on my face. I need to, I can't handle this right now. Exactly. Like, uh, you're like a bandsaw operating like in the you know, middle of a fucking... Finally, someone else in our group had to order on her behalf because the bartender refused to serve her. Mm. A real punk move that's enough to ensure we'll never be back and we'll make a good point to share our story about the ridiculous poor customer service we experienced from our from this poor employee. That mm. although that last that last sentence is one of my favorite things about like bad Yelp reviews. It's like that vengeance thing. Where it's like where, that like, guy's gotta lose his job. Uh, I will <laughs> Not only will I not be back, but I'll make sure that everybody knows that I won't be back. <laughs> well, that and like just the idea of like I want to point out exactly the bartender that did this, so that they never work again in the whole city, and like and and, and eventually have to kill themselves out of shame. You know, like back, back in the day, with people who had real power, would be like, "Do you know who I am?" Right. And nowadays, people are like, "Do you know who I am? I'm a Yelp reviewer." <laughs> Like, ooh. Ooh, oh my god. Ooh, geez, I don't know. I could start running now and I'll never outrun that <laughs> shade. <laughs> uh, that's excellent. All right, so All right, are you, uh, let's have uh, Andrew, what is your final analysis, Phil Juwanu, of this bar? Uh, you know what? Like, I can't help but like it to some extent. I would, I would, I think that uh, this is like one of those bars that I, I kind of like, you know, I, I like to shit on somewhat and be like, oh, the elixir, fuck that place. You know, but at the same time, if it was replaced by uh, a standard run-of-the-mill... If uh, the bon viand had taken it over? Yeah, exactly. If, like, if suddenly there were like, you know, a $20 selection of Moscow mules on the, uh, you know, on the menu and it was owned wow. by the trick dog guys, 
I, I would be sad about it. So like, yeah, like the, the yeah, and especially if they like uh, remodeled it or like took away the windows or anything like that, because like, because like no the, more windows. Yeah, like well, that that is like the selling point of this bar is to sit and watch like the the foot traffic go yeah. by. Like if if if, if this place uh, like if they blocked all the windows, I would never come here. I don't think. Like, yeah. You know, it would just be like a dark bar. You know, on a semi convenient corner. I have to admit, when, when, you, we, when we decided to come here, I was like, yeah, you know what, that's probably good because I've kind of said, like, too many nice things about other bars. <laughs> like, it, it'll be good for yeah. me to, like, shit on, like, a Let's bar. Let's go tear up some some place. But honestly, like, the whole time that I've been here, it's been really nice and comfortable. Yeah, and, and you know, like, I've... I've Hey, you know what? We're not here when they're having like a BC hockey game on. Right. Yeah, and, you exactly. Know, like yeah. fucking, you got some drunk <laughs> asshole like you know, like pour, like spilling their you know, fucking IPA on right. on your back. It, I, and I will say that it, it's a great um, it's a great option to have like sort of a spillover bar uh, for like Sunday uh, football when uh, yeah. when the kilowatt gets too crazy because like I mean, the kilowatts, it's a great you know it's a great place to watch football, but it can also be crowded to the point where you can't, you know, you can't get a drink. So, like, you know, I will say it's not a place for drink specials. No, I wouldn't say that either. I'm looking at their list of, like, draft beers. Yeah. And there's no, uh, oh, the bottle beers they have the price of. Draft beers they don't have any prices on. They have bottle beers up here on the chalkboard, and there's, like, no prices. So, um, you know, I mean. Be prepared to, like, pay a little extra, I guess. Yeah, I would say. Uh, But, uh. Yeah, like, I have to admit, like, uh, I thought I was going to hate it, like, uh, having another shitty, like, time. <laughs> but, another like, shit time. <laughs> I thought it was going to be just another shitty bar, <laughs> like the millions of shitty bars we've already done. <laughs> but uh, I actually kind of like it. So, you know, take it for what right. it's worth. Uh, I can't vouch for it on a Friday or Saturday night. Right. But, like, on a weekend, are you going to, like, sit around and watch a women's World Cup game? <laughs> you, you, maybe, uh, maybe they should change the name of this place to, to uh, I thought it was going to suck. <laughs> it's, like, it's uh, it's not. It's no longer the elixir. It's called, yeah, all, all right. Hey, uh, you know, could do worse. <laughs> yeah, could do worse. Yeah, like I can name uh, three or four bars in the immediate area that are probably mo- less fun to hang out in. Andrew, do you have any plugs? I do actually. I have a. Um, all right, so you don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a a, a, a couple. Uh, well, I saw a couple of documentary movies and a and a TV show. But like uh, the the documentary movies. Um, one was a uh, plastic galaxy, which is about Star Wars figures. That sounds and, uh, awful. Yeah, it was it was it was it was mediocre. Um, <laughs> and you're, it didn't really cover like, the. It are wasn't you doing as, the, the two star like plugs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, yeah like it's uh, this movie is all right. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah you, you don't have to kill yourself to see it, but it's okay. Um, the other one I actually thought was pretty good, um, called I Am Evil Knievel. Ooh. And uh, um, and it was like it, there there are some unfortunate parts about it because I think it was done by like Spike TV or something like that. Yeah. But it's like I mean it's it's a two hour Evil Can Evil documentary and like unfortunately they do interview like uh, Guy Fieri and like yeah, and a couple of other people where you're just like this person has no idea like about Evil Can Evil's legacy or why that's important or anything like that. But like <laughs> yeah, but like a lot of the other stuff was really fascinating. Like yeah, just like the like you sort of fail to or, or at least I. I mean, I had like Evil Knievel like action figures and shit like that growing up, and like, uh, but you don't, you don't, you know, you don't think of like Evil Knievel as being like as massive as he was, like you know, oh, just yeah, like, and just you know, Dare as all encompassing, and he's just basically like a drunk idiot that jumps from motorcycles. Like, People yeah. have no idea, like back in the seventies, that uh, Daredevils were a fucking like oh, phenomenon. Yeah, like, well, and and specifically him, I mean, like he just sort of like created the whole genre for himself and like yeah, it was just like I'm the best like yeah, and and uh, and like meanwhile he's like yeah, blowing through all his money on like prostitutes and booze and stuff like do that. Do you yeah. remember Dar Robinson? I do remember Dar Robinson. The late Dar Robinson. The late Dar Robinson. Like he was always on uh, That's Incredible, right? Like yeah. like doing stunts. He uh, came to a very unlikely untimely death doing one of his uh, stunts. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, uh, this time he crashed that motorcycle into the canyon. <laughs> like uh, oh, and uh, oh, and, and sorry. The uh, the other uh, the other uh, plug that I have is uh, for a television show that like I'm really enjoying. It's uh, about three episodes in now, and it's called Deutschland '83, and uh, it's basically it, it uh, uh, follows an East German that's going undercover in West Germany uh, hmm. during like 1983, like sort of the, co- the height of the Cold War, and so you've got oh. like all these like Pershing missiles like parked in Germany pointed at Russia and like so like it's this crazy like great 
like a sort of uh, um, almost like a um, perspective of it, where where you know it's like you know I know what sort of America went through at that time, like and sort of like what the thought process was of like, well, we have to fight Russia and like Germany's the place to you know that's that's the border we've chosen to like right. sort of launch all of our weapons from and like and but there's all this talk of like you know first strike winnability and like yeah and stuff like that where like you know America and Russia are like basically deciding can we win like a nuclear war and like and I b both sides are like well we can do it but we pretty much have to sacrifice Germany in the process you know it's like right. it's like you know we, we, if we blow up Germany we can stop the Russians from coming in and then Russians like Russians like if we blow up Germany we can stop the the Americans from coming in and so it's like it's pretty fascinating, and like they do a really good job of mixing in music and like you know, ninety nine luff balloons and like yeah, and, and stuff like that. Where it's like, yeah, you, know, you have people making like these uh, matter of fact comments, like yeah, you know, like oh god, like I can't stand this Nana song. It's everywhere. What was like, the name of uh, the movie about the East German? Um, oh, it was oh, it was called The Lives of Others. Oh, okay. that's a great movie about. The cold, like uh, like Berlin during the Cold yeah. War. It's like East uh, versus it's, Western. It's, it's similar all about, to that. It's some... all about surveillance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is similar to that. In that, you know, you've got this undercover kid that's like sort of being forced to like go to the West and like you know become like an undercover thing. But like yeah, and so at the same time he's discovering like that the West has like Sony Walkmans and like yeah stuff like that. He's like you know struggling with the idea of like oh shit like yeah like uh, yeah and and even like the uh, his bosses are like stealing like floppy disks that they have no idea what to do with because they don't have computers. They, they, could, you know, they like, could eat their dinner off them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, you know, we, like, we, we could put like a uh, sausage on it <laughs> and eat it like that. It's like uh, a strange brew where it's like a, you play the, it's a, for a record player you put on the side. <laughs> it's like some uh, Berlin new wave band. <laughs> uh, I wonder how much like uh, rivalry there was between East and West Germany during that whole like it's, it's, Soviet occupation because like when the wall came down like there didn't seem to be there any problems it's well, just yeah, like everybody yeah, was just like oh yeah now we're Germany again right well I think that was I mean that's probably a part of the the problem of the whole wall to begin with was that you just you erected it and then expected like people to like uh, be against the people on the other side and everyone's like well no that's my neighbor yesterday yeah, yeah, and now there's a wall here it's my like, cousin <laughs> right yeah it's like like yeah, like uh, I I'd love to oh. hate, hate that guy, but holy shit! Like, did we get a score already? That's right. Enough of that. Germany shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They finished in uh, fourth place. The and U.S. Yeah. just scored. Uh, and, oh, Jesus, like some crazy looking Devo person in a in a uh, like an eagle like, <laughs> rubber a mask person. Well, doesn't it like like, like some of those like baby masks that like Devo wore? Like yeah. Or, or mean, like I birds. would love to see like somebody show up at like one because everybody's like dressed up. They've painted their faces like the American flag. So right. somebody like a bunch of people like show up, you know, like dressed like Devo. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, but okay. Uh, I don't have any plugs. Wow, that was a good goal. Mm. Uh, my plugs are basically uh, ingress and only I'm plugging the blue team and not the green team. Right. Uh, Friday Night Lights. I'm still watching that, and uh, that's having a. I'm having a good time with that. Uh, I started wa watching this show called Peaky Blinders, which is a Netflix original. Yeah. And it, like, granted, it has the stupidest name. It is the worst title of it. I mean, like, like I, 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 I may check it out, but it's going to be tough going. Like, yeah, for the first episode, I'm going to be like, I'm watching Peaky Blinders? Well, like, what's the, my life come to? Well, the worst thing is that it's, like, it's either Birmingham or, like, Manchester, where it's, like, like uh, early 1900s, and it's about right. this ruthless gang. And they're like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is courtesy of the Peaky Blinders. <laughs> and it's just, like, the, the most, like, uh, Peaky Blinders sounds like something you would watch on Nickelodeon. Right. Some, like, you know, Tom <laughs> Is everyone's Trump. reaction like, wait, do you want to... Do you want to try that again? <laughs> yeah, you want to try that again? Because I'm like really not scared. Uh, it's like it sounds like some character that Tom Kenny does the voice of. <laughs> it's like, with the with bananas and pajamas gang. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, but it's, it's actually really good. It stars uh, Killian, well, uh, Killian Murphy. Okay, yeah. And uh, he's really good in it. And uh, the, uh, the actual the art direction and the production value is absolutely amazing. Huh. Uh, and I'll do a reverse plug. I saw the new Terminator movie. Mm. And while it is ver is always fun to watch Amelia Clark run around and shoot people, right? everything else about the movie absolutely sucks. Mm. Like the, oh, 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 there's another goal. Jesus H. What the fuck well, is going on here? 
This is uh, going to be as one-sided as World War II. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they dropped an A-bomb on Japan right there. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so that's... So here we are. Okay, Andrew, you know more about, like, soccer than I do. Right. They've scored two goals in, like, the first, like, fucking four minutes. Yeah. It's, it's a 90-minute game. So do we expect the rest of the game to just be this slow, drawn-out oh, sure, fucking, yeah. like, turn your channel? Well, so there was, like, I want to say it was, oh, Christ, I can't even remember who was playing now. But it was, like, a, um, I think it was for the Copa America, which is, like, sort of the South American, like, championship. Um they had a game recently where due to like the the way that the standings work like uh if if the if if the two teams playing played to a tie they would both make it and like and and so then like who would it, play well no but, but i'm saying like out of there was like a group of oh, four oh they would they would make it to the it, world yeah Cup. exactly right. and so like there's a group of four and the top two teams make it and the way that it like played out was that if these two teams that played got a tie. I think it was like Portugal against somebody, but like a... Not in Copa because like, like Copa's yeah, yeah, like yeah. all South America. Yeah. Like so it was it, like Chile and... Um, it must have been like a Euro qualifying or something like that, but, but it was like a... It was... Um, yeah, it was like this game where both teams knew that if they tied, they would advance. So the entire game was like basically just like controlled keep away. Like it was just, yeah, like, like. Oh, so both, so of them both would teams, make it. yeah, both teams basically just. So what team does does not make it? Like, do they like? Well, take no, the, away? the two other teams in the group. So there's like four teams in a group, right? And like they all play each other once. But the way that this wound up was like, oh, okay, uh, the last, the last, the third game, I guess. Like uh, now, like if you tie your opponent, both of you guys go, and the other team, two teams are eliminated. Oh. And so, so they were like, well, fuck it. Like, why would why would either of us try to win this game? Because like, and and basically, if either of those teams lose that game, they're out. So like, they they were totally incentivized to play for a tie. Now and I, that's all they did. Now I totally understand when people talk about soccer being the beautiful sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh yeah. All right, passes the, back to his teammate. The way back they the way they played keep away is uh, just like the greatest. Well, and like, like and you saw like a clip of the game, and like no one even crossed midfield ever. Like uh, like uh, like somebody would get the ball, and they just like pass it for like five minutes. What if you bought a ticket to that game? Like oh, it'd be so it would be so annoying. I would like I would leave after like five minutes and be like, this is worthless. Jeez. But, uh, so I guess we fully expect the U.S. to uh, win. No, I'm, I'm still uh, I'm still saying Japan three two, even though it's two nothing in four minutes. You're still alive. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. The two. Yeah, well, this is exactly what I what I thought would happen, for sure. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, oh, what was I talking about? Oh, the Terminator. So yes, the uh, it's good to see Amelia Clark run around and try to uh, fight uh, cyborgs, but Schwarzenegger is way too old to be in an action movie, and the two other people they have. Scar starred in it, uh, just don't have the juice to bring it home. <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta be honest. It's like, sorry guys. They got, they, they, they basically, I don't know where they hired. Like, what, seeing the two male leads right. that aren't Schwarzenegger in the Terminator movie, it really makes me think: Is there a shortage of actors in the world? Because these two guys are just fucking <laughs> losers. You're like, c couldn't they have? Uh kept these guys busy with some Marvel sitcom or something like that. Like, you really have to put these guys in a Terminator movie? Well, maybe that's it. It's like, maybe because so many, like, uh, comic book nerds go to movies now that mm -hmm. they want to, like, cast people who look like the losers that they are. <laughs> that's probably it. That's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we, we, we've, we've settled it all. <laughs> exactly. All right, uh, do you have anything else? Uh, I don't think so. All we've, right, uh, well. As well, usual, when we, uh, um, when we, uh, when we fail to do an episode uh, in a little while, uh, we've gone way over. So, yeah, we, yeah, I know because we had to make up for that time we were like uh, dicking around. <laughs> like by dicking around on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it; it all works. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, this sense. is SF Barcast. I'm Jeff Cleary. I'm Andrew Louder, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.